the Summer Art Festival, a place where artists show off their work and their talent. And it's a place where they can dream. George Carruth started off chasing his dream in 1982. And like so many other artists, he began traveling the art show circuit, getting up at the crack of dawn, often on weekend mornings. From the upper peninsula of Michigan to the Florida Keys, artists travel mostly in vans and trucks from show to show, unloading display racks and artwork, hoping to someday break out of the pack and make their mark. But unlike many of his peers, George Carruth found a way to break out of the pack. In just a few short years, he took his love of animals, insects, flowers, and the beauty of nature, and transformed it into a thriving multi-million dollar company. He left behind the security of a job in corporate America, and along with his wife, took a leap of faith. I fully believed in us, complete belief, absolute, unequivocal and no fear, none. Back in the early days, you know, I was supporting the family carving stones. So I, I, did, I couldn't afford to spend a long time on a piece. I had to keep turning them over. I had to go to a show and I had to sell about four or five stones to pay my bills. But I always have those what I call bread and butter stones to make sure I paid my show fee, my hotel stay, and gas to get home. And now this couple from Perrysburg, Ohio, operate Carruth Studios in Waterville, Ohio, and two Garden Smile stores, one in Waterville and the newest in Columbus, Ohio. And Carruth concrete stones and figures are a common fixture in homes and gardens across the country. This is the story of how a shy, soft-spoken man from Ohio has become a true American sculptor. Many Carruth designs are conceived here at their rustic home, a few miles outside of Waterville. Here George is surrounded by nature. The garden is laced with some of George's one-of-a-kind sculptures and some of his earliest pieces. He likes to spend time with their animals his sheep, Chloe, and his dog, Blue. I really like nature a lot. I mean, I, could, I can sit and look out the window at the bird feeder all day, you know, maybe read a book, watch the birds, sketch, watch the birds. It's, it's like watching television for me. It's, I really enjoy it. And we have a pond, and so you can see the fish, feed the turtles, and the dragonflies buzzing around. So I, I usually have all kinds of images floating through my head. And um, I'll get the sticky pads out and kind of draw the essence of what I'm after. And I really don't know what it is. But if I take the pen and put it to the paper and start making line, pretty soon something will come and I'll hopefully know what the essence of my thought is. You know, I don't try to be complicated. I don't try to do materials that impress people because they're expensive or difficult to work with. I don't try to do imagery that you know has to be explained, has to have a title explaining what's going on. It's just gentle images, um, scenes that you could see in your backyard. George says he's stuck on 10 years old, so it's no surprise he loves to spend hours in the children's section at bookstores. Well, looking at children's books is like going to an art museum. You know, instead of walking from painting to painting, you're just flipping page, 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 and you can just you get so many different styles just by picking three or four books off the shelf and sitting down. It's, it's really an incredible way to look at art. And they're just beautiful by themselves. So why not just sit and enjoy them? George has a quiet demeanor, and he's the engine behind his multi-million dollar company. But the child inside is always trying to come out. 
Sometimes it manifests itself in the faces of his sculptures, on his signature piece, The Garden Smile, or on one of his more recent creations, The Garden Grouch. I try to bring them to life. They're never looking dead on, like a lot of the statuary you see on federal buildings and all that. They're, they're usually looking off to the side, one eyebrow is higher than the other. Sometimes the nose are bent a little bit, just to put an energy to one direction or the other. I think of a more of an illustration. I want people to look at it and almost wonder, what is that person or that animal thinking? Or at least assume this animal's thinking something instead of just that dead on look like you've seen a lot of the older sculpture. He can bring things to life. His work has energy and motion and, and uniqueness that if you look at other people's work, they don't have. Energy and motion, that's what it takes to create a Caruth original. You start with the big tools, you're knocking off corners, you're knocking off edges and you gradually you know, work down to smaller and smaller tools. And I do have pneumatic tools, and I use them a lot. They're air power tools. And they make the work go a lot faster. Um, there's a lot of stone to take off, and I'm able to knock away that kind of, what I'd say, boring stuff, getting to the heart of the piece. And once I'm down uh, within a certain level, and you know, it can vary, then I get out the hand tools, and that's where the magic starts. 